Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is kind of a Martian detective story. Is that accurate? I think that's accurate. Because it involves a mysterious Martian meteorite. Martian meteorite. Martian, <laughs> mysterious Martian meteorite that was accidentally discovered in someone's desk drawer about a hundred years ago. And a recent study of this meteorite not only gives us more insight into the history of water on Mars, but also gives us more clues into how that meteorite ended up in that desk drawer. So pull up a chair, get cozy, and let's look into the mystery of the forgotten Martian meteorite. So around either 1929 or 1931, I did see both dates in several articles, this very pretty 1.8 pound rock was found in a desk drawer in the biology department at Purdue University in Indiana. No one was exactly sure who put it there, but later it was discovered to be a meteorite. And presumably it was thought that it was found by someone who witnessed the meteorite fall. They thought later, oh, he must have retrieved it and gifted it to the university. And then it seems like it was completely forgotten about until somebody opened up this desk drawer. It is called the Lafayette meteorite because Purdue is located in West Lafayette, Indiana. During early studies of the meteorite, which is only two inches long, it was thought to be of Martian origin. This hypothesis was confirmed many years later in the 1980s, after the Viking mission transmitted to Earth the results of isotope content in Martian rocks. This confirmed the origin of a number of meteorites, including Lafayette. But a recent international team of scientists led by Purdue's Dr. Marissa Tremblay now believes that this meteorite has a history of interacting with water. Water. And they think that this interaction with water was probably the result of volcanic activity melting ice on the red planet more than 700 million years ago. Their findings were published on November 6, 2024 in the journal Geochemical Perspective Letters. By dating the water-altered minerals in the Lafayette meteorite, scientists zeroed in on a date of 742 million years ago. But this was a bit confusing for them. Because according to Mars climate science, liquid water on the red planet vanished more than three billion years ago. So where did the water come from 742? million years ago. Tremblay said in a statement, we do not think there was abundant liquid water on the surface of Mars at this time. Instead, we think the water came from the melting of nearby subsurface ice called permafrost, and that the permafrost melting was caused by magmatic activity that still occurs periodically on Mars to the present day. The Lafayette meteorite is a type of Martian meteorite known as a nacolite. Made from from igneous or volcanic rocks, they possibly originate from a crater on the basaltic lava plains near the extinct Elysium Mons volcano. Therefore, chronicling the Nacolite's history on Mars is a key aim of planetary scientists. Once the Lafayette meteorite had been blasted off the surface of Mars and sent spinning into space, it was exposed to the cosmic rays that irradiated the meteorite. And this backs up the recent discoveries by the Curiosity rover on Mars, which is exploring long dried rivers on Mars. Curiosity took isotope measurements from rocks that suggest they probably formed in transient liquid water, that is, water that comes from melted ice. And what makes this whole thing even more unique is that Earth's inventory of meteorites from Mars is tiny. Less than 400 are known to hail from the red planet. Even smaller is the number of nacolites, of which there are only 32 recognized samples, according to the Meteoritical Society. And the Lafayette meteorite is just one of those precious 32. So when did the Lafayette meteorite even arrive on Earth? And how does this get us any closer to knowing how it ended up in a drawer at Purdue University? In an earlier paper in 2022, researchers, including Tremblay, did some detective work to try and figure that out. They identified contamination from the mycotoxin deoxynevalinol, better known as vomitoxin, which is a disease that affects crops. Tremblay said, we used organic contaminants from Earth found 
on Lafayette, specifically crop diseases, that were particularly prevalent in certain years to narrow down when it might have fallen and whether the meteorite fall may have been witnessed by someone. Tremblay and her colleagues concluded that Lafayette must have fallen in a field somewhere in semi-rural Indiana in about 1919. There, they believe it was found by a Purdue University student who possibly saw it fall. They think he brought it back to the university and then it was at some point put in a drawer where it was discovered about a decade later, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. I mean, it's 1919, right? I mean, how much are meteorites from space even on the mind of your average college student? I mean, this is a time where World War I has just ended. Women just got the right to vote in America. Commercial aviation is not even a thing. And this kid sees something fall from the sky, goes to pick it up because he knows it's something, and then has the wherewithal to take it to Purdue University. And then it gets forgotten, left in a desk drawer. And then over a hundred years later, we use science that was beyond this kid's wildest dreams to unpack the story of this meteorite. And this goes back to one of my favorite recurring themes on this channel. Like the video I did about that little girl in England in 2020 who found the jawbone of what turned out to be a new species of prehistoric marine reptile. She didn't know what it was, but she knew it was something. Ordinary people just becoming part of these huge scientific discoveries. It's just one of my favorite things. I think in part because it can just happen to anyone. It just takes that extra curiosity factor. That student saw something fall from the sky, we think, but knew that it was unusual and important. And his effort, that tiny effort to just go retrieve it and turn it into a university has given us additional insights into Mars for years to come. The Lafayette meteorite currently is displayed at Chicago's Field Museum, but for the anniversary of its discovery, it did go back on display at Purdue University due to a student-led petition. And it is a rare and precious thing. Dr. Tremblay said many meteoroids are produced by impacts on Mars and other planetary bodies, but only a handful will eventually fall to Earth. And once they hit Earth, meteorites actually quickly lose their research value after they are exposed to Earth's environment. It doesn't take long before nature wears away the rock's fusion crust. And so that's why it's thought that the Lafayette meteorite must have been found and preserved quickly, given its pristine condition. So there you have it. I mean, it's not exactly case closed because we don't know the exact identity of the student, but it does tell us most likely when the meteorite was discovered and how long it sat in that desk drawer before it was rediscovered. Rediscovery, one of only 32 Nacolites. Just sitting in an old desk drawer. Also, when I was researching meteorites and their value, do you guys know that there are a lot of websites where people buy meteorites? Like, a lot. They'll buy them, they'll sell them, they'll help you price them. I had no idea about the size of the online meteorite market. It's a full thing. So yeah, fun facts from late night rabbit holes, you guys. So let me know what you guys think about this story and put yourself in Indiana in 1919. If you saw something fall from the sky, a small something, would you be the type of person to seek it out and turn it over to your local college? I'd like to think that I'd be that type of person, but I also have to remember that I would have to take like a hundred years of space learning out of the equation, knowing absolutely none of that. You see this thing fall, would you pick it up? Because I think those kind of people are pretty rare. That belongs in a museum. So do you. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for joining me on this mystery. And as always, I will see you in the next video.